Welcome back, throwers, rollers, savers. Not every fan base needs a name. Damn it, man, this is important. We have t-shirts to sell. Your mom's important. So, welcome back. I'm still Amy. I'm still Ben. And I guess I'm still Ivan. So far, we've covered the basics. Race, class, and ability scores. In this episode, we're going to cover skills. Skills are the things your characters do when they're not murdering monsters. It's stuff like picking locks, swimming, or bluffing their way out of a tight spot. As your character advances in a level, you will gain new skills and improve in existing ones. Skills flesh out your character and allow you different ways to tackle challenges the GM will throw at you. There are 35 skills to choose from, and any class can pick any skill. Your barbarian can become skilled at linguistics, and your cleric can become a dirty, sneaky little pickpocket. But those characters will never be as good as the character who takes it as a class skill. For instance, rogues are naturally better at climbing than wizards, but wizards can study magic more easily than rogues. When your character puts a rank in a class skill, he will get plus three to his roll. The class skill table is located on page 89. So what skills should Garthok take? Like we said, whatever you want, homie. The world is Garthok's oyster. What if he wants to brew his own ale? You can train and craft. What if he wants to create a helmet out of an ogre skull? Craft again. How about if he wants to run, go, get to the chapel? All right, sounds like escape artist, maybe stealth, or survival. Just take all three. Excellent. How many points do I get? Well, each class gets a certain number of skill ranks per level. These are listed on page 87 of the core rulebook. You're a fighter, so you start with two skill ranks, and all classes also add their intelligence modifier to that number to determine how many ranks they get per level. Right. Okay, so sweet! I get a plus two because of my intelligence, so that gives Garthok four. Right. Yep. Garthok is a secret genius, like Rain Man. All right, enough pop culture references. To the character generation station. <laughs> Time to pick your skills, Ben. We could get all wacky, but I think for a new player like you, it's best just to stick with your class skills, since training those skills gives you a bonus. OK. A bonus to what exactly? Oh, um, good question. Yeah. I guess we should probably explain how skills work, huh? I agree. So let's say your character wants to climb a wall. Here we go. Mason is a man, a manly man named Mason, who needs to gain altitude to get home to his Masonic family to resume his job as a stone mason. However, Mason is not a skilled climber, and he's not very strong. Every wall is different, and some are easier to climb than others. For example, climbing a wall that has a knotted rope is a relatively easy task, even for an untrained person. So what the GM would do is assign a difficulty class of, let's say, five for this climb. Now, unfortunately, our hero is totally unskilled. Just in climbing. So in order for him to successfully climb the wall, he needs to roll a five or higher, because right now there's no modifiers to his roll. Now, let's take away the rope. And let's cover the wall with butter. Now the difficulty glass to climb a wall like that is probably something like 20. And the fact that it's a slippery surface could add another 5 to the difficulty class, meaning that he'd have to roll a 25 to climb that wall. Looks like our poor, unskilled hero is totally screwed. Now, let's say Mason is a burly guy with a strength of, say, 18. This means he would get plus 4 to do his roll. And maybe he's been taking climbing lessons for two years or so. This is the equivalent of two skill ranks in climb, which is an additional plus two. And finally, let's say he's a rogue. And since climbing is a rogue class skill, he'd get an additional plus three to his roll. Now he can add nine to his climbing roll. Now, that's no cakewalk with a difficulty class of 25. Mason would still have to roll like a 16 to climb the wall even after all of those modifiers are applied. So, that's basically how skills work. You say you want to do something, the GM sets the difficulty class, you roll a d20, and then you add your modifiers. And that's the core mechanic of the d20 system. So if your results of the roll are above the target, success. If not, failure. And one last thing about skills. Some skills, like climbing and perception, can be done by anyone, regardless of training. People who are trained are just better at them. 
but there are some skills that can only be used if they are trained, such as disabled device or linguistics. Okay, so let's explain. For example, no one taught poor Garthok how to pick a lock. Maybe he's seen someone do it with a hairpin, but he's never actually trained in how to set the pins and turn the tumblers. Right now, he's just some hairy dude sticking some metal into a hole. And he could do this forever and never unlock even the simplest of locks. Of course, there are many ways to accomplish the same task without the disabled device skill. Garthok! So, you ready to pick your skills? Uh, already done. Whoa. Really? That was fast. I'm going to put all of my ranks into swimming. Garthok is going to be the dolphin of the sea. Aren't dolphins the dolphin of the sea? Garthok the drunkard sheds his armor and plunges into the icy river, surfacing in a frothy maelstrom of bubbles and saliva. He executes terrifying butterfly strokes that dazzles and enrages his enemies. They tear themselves apart in rage. Garthok! <laughs> wow. Awesome. Uh, ben, I'm sorry though. I hate to rain on your parade, but you can't put skill ranks higher than your hit dice. Hit dice? It's basically your level. You're first level, so you can't have any skill ranks higher than one. So you won't be able to put four ranks into swimming until your fourth level. Well, that changes things. So, well, maybe we can start with your class skills. You know, according to the table on page 89, the fighter class skills are climb, craft, handle animal, intimidate, knowledge dungeoneering, knowledge engineering, profession, ride, survival, and swim. So what do those three letters mean? Well, each skill is attached to an ability score. STR is strength, mm -hmm. INT is intelligence, and so on. Your corresponding ability modifiers are added to or subtracted from all skill roles. Consequently, it would behoove you to pick your skills that would match your higher ability scores, which for you are constitution, strength, and dexterity, and intelligence. You're more likely to succeed in those roles than say something that's wisdom or charisma based. Okay, so... What are all the skills? Damage man, we don't have time to cover each skill. If you want to look them all up, they're on page 89 through 109 of the core rule book. <clears throat> okay. Um, I guess I am going to take climb, uh, knowledge engineering, swim, and profession. Hmm. Okay, cool. Those are great. Yeah, we'll explain those. Uh, climb and swim are pretty self-explanatory. One helps you climb, the other helps you swim. I'll let you decide which is which. <laughs> well, knowledge dungeoneering is your overall knowledge of dungeons. You've studied them, you have an idea of how they work, and you can often predict what might be around the next corner. Should we peek our heads into that doorway that looks like the green devil's mouth? I have no idea, but you might know with knowledge dungeoneering. <laughs> cool. What about profession? Now, profession is just what you do outside of adventuring that helps you make money. So, and you can earn half your ranks in gold each week using your profession skill. Now you've got one rank, which means you can earn half a gold per week using your profession. Here's a list of jobs that our graduates have taken. Butcher, merchant, dental hygienist, paralegal, bookkeeping, innkeeper, pianist, midwife, sailor, prostitute, and many, many more. <laughs> pianist. All right, so you can see on your character sheet that there are these handy little columns. The left-hand column is the total for which you will add up into your dice roll. And the column next to that is for your ranks. One rank is plus one, two ranks is plus two, etc. Now the column next to that is for modifiers from ability scores, which we discussed earlier. And in the column next to that, you add three because it's a trained class skill. And finally, the last column is for miscellaneous adjustments such as racial modifiers or feats. Feats? Next episode, Ben. <laughs> if we do this calculation for Garthok's climb skill, we start with plus one because of your rank, then we add plus three due to your 17 strength. Next, we add another plus three because climbing is a fighter class skill. This brings you to a grand total of plus seven anytime your character wants to climb a wall. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> but there will be other <laughs> modifiers such as penalties for wearing armor. Wearing armor makes climbing harder since you'll be constricted in carrying a heavy load. Now, and you want your character sheet to reflect exactly the amount you add or subtract from each roll. The faster you can do the math, the more time you'll have to actually play the game. Okay. I think I get it. Good. Now you're skilled in skills. In next episode, we're going to tackle the curious world of feats. 
Ooh, I'm tingly with anticipation. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. If you liked what you saw in this video, like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you saw, then you probably didn't see what you think you saw. You only saw what you think others thought you saw, and you think you saw what you think you saw. Exactly. Be sure to watch the next episode. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Until then, we are Saving Throw, and... Let's Dungeon!